Hi everyone, this is the last video of the basic questions where sort of I'm trying to demonstrate some essential skills. This one isn't really some trick per se, it's just to remind you that in predicate logic derivations, order matters a lot. So here we start with a basic show. Now this is a double x existential, but it's really not that big of a deal at all, and hy. Now, when I have a show of an existential, I have to just remember that what I really want is some instantiated version of it, and then I can generalize. But here, because the variables are different, I need to make sure that alpha and beta are different. Actually, they could be the same. No, no, they got to be different. Okay, so what does this mean? So it means I need f alpha on its own, and I'll also need some h beta on its own. Okay. So this proof is actually really easy. If I just did it directly and immediately, um, no, there'd be nothing special about it. But what I'm going to try and show you are some sort of like mistakes. So one mistake would be to actually go ahead and now say, okay, well, what I really want to do is show f uh, x. And then later, what I really want to do is show uh, h y. And actually, if you want a little exercise for yourself, if you try and do it this way, this proof is unsolvable. Um, so here, the reason why is because we actually just know we need f of something, and we know that we need h of something, alpha and beta, but we don't know what. So we actually have choice on what to sort of select and look for here. The problem is we just didn't really have any guidance for our choice, so we were just like, oh, whatever, fx and hy. And that's always dangerous. So when you have choice, you do it last. And when you no, have no choice, you always do it first. And this is really important. So if you want to try and see what happens afterwards, if you try show fx, show hy, um, you will realize that you actually can't solve it. If you do solve it, it means you cheated. So we'll get rid of that. We'll go back. Okay. So, uh, oops, I need my pen. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to remember that we just want this, and we will actually just choose what we want later. So now I look at my premises, and it's pretty straightforward. If I UI this first, that's a mistake because I always see that there's an existential here, so I want to EI first. Okay, so always, always, always EI first. Um, another thing we could also try and do first is set up things like UDs first. So if I realize I want to show this, I could actually UD first as well. But in general, it doesn't really matter between these two. I'm going to actually just choose to EI first. Um, and that's premise uh, three EI. Now, at this point, I could try and set up some sort of UD or whatever. But if I just look at this derivation, I realize it's pretty straightforward. Notice that on uh, premise one and two, they only have things related to G's, B's, and H's. And premise three and four have things related to A's and F's. So it won't be surprising that I basically just use the associated premises to get the things I actually want. So when I need to show HY, I'll be looking at premise one and two. And when I need to show uh, F, the FX part, I'll actually be looking at premises three and four. So it seems like because I just EI premise three, I'm actually focused on the Fs and the A's. So I might as well just stare at these two and just finish the problem. Okay, well, it's actually really straightforward from here. Um, now I know what to uh, UI my AY to. That's pretty easy. AI, that's premise for UI. And then I can easily split this up and do a modus ponens and I get FI. So that's a split. So two by conditional to conditional, line three modus ponens. That's that. Now, at this point, I can look over here and realize that I've accomplished one of my goals. I've solved for f alpha, where it's just i. Great. Um, so now I actually need to solve for um, hy, and I'm going to focus on the first two premises. So again, some students who might just not sort of know what to do at this point, they'll be like, oh, OK, I know. I'll, um, I'll just uh, ui B, uh, for all x, bx to y, or something like that. Or if I write show y, then I can do something. And this is actually sort of trouble. So instead, what I'm going to realize is that um, it looks like this is conditional. So it doesn't look like it is a conditional. So I can mp or mt it. So I might as well actually just try and show the antecedent. 
So I'm going to show uh, for all x, um, gx, arrow, bx. Uh, you could show the negation of the consequent too. It's actually just as equally easy. It's, it's no big deal. Um, six. Now I can set up a universal derivation. Now the thing is, I have to look around. Make sure that x is not unbound anywhere. It is not. So I can immediately go and show gx arrow bx. If I had actually UI'd premise 2 earlier to bx, which lots of students will do, then I actually won't be able to do this move. And so an easy proof becomes more difficult. Okay. So that's all fine. A, C, D, A, I, D. So once I have this, it's actually very straightforward. I realize now I can UI um, on line 10. I can UI for all x, bx to bx. And that is premise 2 UI. And of course, this is a contradiction right here or direct derivation. I'll just say direct derivation because it's easier. Then I can close that on line 11 because I showed the consequence successfully on 8, conditional derivation, and I close this as a UD, 6 UD. Um, the point of showing this is, of course, to uh, modus ponens. So now I can modus ponens, and I get there exists a x hx, and that is premise 1, line 5, modus ponens, um, and I can EI this. Now I have to make sure I pick a brand new variable that hasn't appeared anywhere. So that's J. Okay, so that's fine. I've showed HJ. Wow, that was dumb. I've showed HJ, and the finish line is, you know, really straightforward here. Uh, on line 15, I will now take my FI and HJ and join them up. And I will existentially instantiate uh, the first one, so that's the f, and I get there is this x bracket fx and hj, and then I'll do it one more time. 17, there exists y, there exists x, fx, and hj. That's 16 eg, direct derivation. That's 15 eg. Ooh, this is annoying. I wish I'd zoomed out. And that's 4 and 14 ADJ. Okay, sorry for the mess. I should have just zoomed out. Don't know what I was thinking. Um, there's nothing really to this derivation, but I'm going to point out that if you had actually committed to showing f of uh, x and h of y first, or you had messed up the order of your EIs versus UIs somewhere along the way, this proof is unsolvable. It's actually a nice demonstration of a proof that seems very easy because I'm doing it in the proper order. But if you do it in the wrong order, you can't solve it, or you think you solved it, but you've actually cheated. So the moral of this story is that I had choice in this. I could have actually, you know, I wasn't sure what I wanted to show. Did I know ahead of time I was looking for FI or HJ? Of course not. So I should not worry about this. I keep this in the back of my mind. And if it's helpful, later I can show f of something where I know that this will be handy. It's just that if you do it too soon, you end up actually creating sort of the cycle where you cannot solve anything. Same thing over here. Resist doing UIs of stuff like this. Okay, that's it. Uh, those are my videos for today. I might try and put one up on Monday and Tuesday as well, so sort of like full-blown um, basic questions. But you can see how there's lots of sort of skills to sort of practice here, but they all basically apply the same rules. Um, okay, good luck.